I'm sure you've heard of Skype. It's a free instant messaging program that allows voice and webcam chat with people with the world and all over. I've been using it to keep track of my old friends. We all went to college a fortnight ago. Last week, I was talking to Annie, a girl I used to go to school with. We'd both just moved into our flats. We were both single and the first semester hadn't yet begun, so we found ourselves with plenty of time to chat. Usually we'd Skype at least once a day. The stuff we talked about isn't hugely interesting. She brought up new headphones. I'd watched The Princess Bride for the first time. It was a familiar company amidst the time, you know? Anyway, it was Tuesday morning. I'd been clubbing the previous night, and I was pretty groggy and hungover, but I'd awoken to the plant-lived buzzing of a Skype call, cursing at the fact I left my laptop on. I stumbled out of bed. Ugh. Hello? My bleary eyes struggled against the painfully bright monitor in front of me. Annie was, of course, dressed up and grinning, sporting her headphones. She gave me a cheery wave, in which I responded with a half-smile. <laughs> well, aren't you the life of the party this morning? <laughs> you should have seen me last night. My dance moves put the club to shame. <laughs> Big fish, little fish doesn't impress anyone. Hey, don't you have an introduction meeting with your tutor today? I glanced at my calendar, but the ink refused to stop squirming on the page. I assumed she was right, but even the small amount of sunlight that stepped into my gloomy domain under the curtains was eye-watering. Ugh, <laughs> fuck that. What about you? What are you doing today? Hoping to get a call from Erin. She just took off yesterday, during a fire drill. She left a letter on her desk saying that she was going home. Which one's Erin again? <laughs> I asked half serious. You know how it is. Your friends talk about so many people that they just blur together after a while. Annie made an unimpressed face. My flatmate? She lives across the corridor from me. She just vanished. I mean, it's only been a day, but we were thinking about calling her parents just to check up on her. <laughs> Do it. Better safe than sorry, right? Before she could reply, there was a sudden shrieking of an alarm. Annie said something that drowned out my noise and I covered my ears, wincing. What'd you say? I asked. She had to shout directly in the microphone. I said, that's the fire alarm. I'd better go outside or the warden will have a fit and make us do the whole thing again. What time should I call back? I asked, raising my voice as much as my pounding headache would allow. Don't worry, I'll only be gone for like five minutes. I'll just leave Skype on. With that, she was gone, pulling her headphones off and placing them on the keyboard. After a few minutes, the alarm cut out. Then the door opened. It wasn't Annie, though it was wearing a blue boiler suit, stained with paint, a beanie-style hat, and mask made from bleached skull from some kind of goat or sheep. My eyes were drawn to its hand, however, a rubber glove wrapped around a hook, the kind you see at the counter of a butcher shop's. For a few seconds I just sat there, numbly wandering. If this was Annie playing a creepy joke on me, then I snapped into action. What the fuck are you doing? I yelled. Who are you? There was no response to the figure. It couldn't hear me. The headphones were still plugged into Anne's laptop. Instead, it simply stood there, taking in the room. Ten seconds later, it began to approach the desk. I fumbled for my phone. I had to warn Annie. I selected her number on speed dial, not taking my eyes off the figure of the screen. It was peering intently into the camera, eyes glittering behind empty sockets. The masked figure froze, then slowly and deliberately, it reached its free hand off camera. I squinted against the pixelated image, then my heart sank. It was Annie's phone. She'd left it on her desk. The figure cocked its head to the side, throwing me what I presume was supposed to be a pitying look, before it hit the off button of the mobile device and placed it on her laptop. It reached into its pocket, it produced something white and dropped atop her keyboard. I only saw it for a second, but it looked like an envelope. It then wandered across the wardrobe, opened the door and climbed outside, stooping to fit. It hesitated as it did so, and turned directly at the webcam. The light caught its teeth though it were flashing at me in a cruel grin. Then, it pulled the wardrobe shut. I glanced down at my phone. I had to call the police. No question of that. 
but even as I dialed the first nine, I realized the futility of the jester. There would be the bother of them finding and contacting the department of Annie City, 50 miles away. <sighs> Whatever I called anyway. You're three to the emergency services. Which service do you require? Uh, yeah, I need to talk to- I paused mid-sentence. I paused because the door had opened and Annie hurried inside. Her hair was wet from the rain. She smiled as she approached the webcam. I yelled as loud as I could for her to run, and I felt tears pinching the corners of my eyes. Annie didn't hear me. She sat down, picked up her headphones, and began to adjust the strap length. Over her shoulder, the wardrobe stirred. Hello? Sir, which service do you require? Are you still there? Sir? 